From the Book of Common Prayer He who hung the earth upon the waters, today he is hung upon the cross. Tonight we pause for a few brief moments. We quiet our hearts. We still our minds to hear again the story of the death of our Lord. This is a difficult story to hear. It is hard for adults and children alike to know that Jesus, like many people then and now, was hurt intentionally by people with power. In this service, you will see images from late FCC member John Wing, who many years ago painted scenes from the Stations of the Cross. Scripture will accompany the paintings, followed by a brief invitation to silent prayer and reflection. Our closing prayer is a poem by the poet Jan Richardson and piano by Susie Lucas. You may find you feel pain or sadness or grief in this time of remembering. That is okay. Let yourself feel it. And at the same time, we call this day good. And we gather not to dwell in this pain, but to dream something better. To be reminded that God takes our pain and our transgressions and creates something new, creates something life-giving, something that we can be a part of. Let us pray. Come, God, be with us in our remembering. Stir our imaginations. Kindle our compassion. Grant us a deep trust in you. Amen. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me? One hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew 26, 36 to 41. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, 
With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priest and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Matthew 26, 47 through 56. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Mark 15, 1-5 through Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Mark fifteen, sixteen through 20.
Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. John 19, 16 through 18. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots, and they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Matthew 27, 35 through 40. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. Mark 15, 33-39 